Hi guys, I haven't been posting any kind of photography related video for a while, especially a uh, lens uh, related video. So today we have this beautiful uh, Sigma um, 10 to 20 lens. I own, I owe it, I owe it like for probably good 12 years and it served me very, very well. Until recently I start uh, noticing it's actually not focusing properly. It works more or less when you focus it manually, but IF doesn't work properly. And also look, please um, here, there's some kind of rattle inside. So yeah, I don't like it. And I, yeah, during my recent trip to Newfoundland, I found that this lens did not perform very well and I had a little bit of troubles with it. It really, really well used. I um, used it a lot. It's my actually one of the uh, uh, primary lens for landscape photography, and I love it. This is actually my favorite. Um, it produces really, really good quality. A little bit of distortion on a wide angle. Uh, always uses, almost u always using it with a circular polarizer. Um, and uh, most of the time on 10 millimeter range on my crop factor and um, Canon 7D uh, or earlier and Canon 40D. So uh, I decided to actually take a look what's going on in this uh, in this lens, what's going on inside. Maybe I can fix it. Maybe I can you know order parts for it and so on and so forth. I had similar issues with some other Canon lenses which I fixed fixed myself. So if this starts happening, that means that AF uh, ring after focus motor is failing. Uh, so actually, not motor itself. The there is a clutch in inside the lens uh, because you can do um, manual focus at the same time when you do after focus. There is no switch. Uh, doesn't have to switch in and out, so doesn't matter. Um, that cl clutch may start failing. So essentially, which which means they have to replace the whole AF assembly. Okay, uh, we don't need this. Um, actually, oh, that's nice. Um, uh, all AF assembly, and uh, I never opened any kind of Sigma lenses before. I opened Canon lenses, Tamron lenses, and Tokino lenses, but never Sigma. So let's see what it's made of, and how hard or easy to get inside to um, check what's going on with autofocus. All right, so for that we may, we may need some several screwdrivers. First of all, we need like uh, Phillips and that's typical Canon kind of bayonet -y stuff. It's four Phillips screwdrivers. Uh, I'm gonna open them. Okay, I'm gonna use this to collect all bolts. Typically, it's very easy to disassemble Canon kind of uh, base lenses because the uh, assembly require four screws, and there is also some screws over here. I have two, two particular in the case. Sometimes it can be one, and uh, in this case also there is uh, more three more screws over here to hold this cup on. I might need to look for a much finer screwdriver because this seems to be not gonna make it uh, too, um, it's too thick but I have this teeny tiny screwdriver I can, I can try to use it to unscrew this little over here this little teeny tiny screw, uh, screw just to hold this connected to this sorry uh, the contacts contact group connected to the um, gee I forgot the word yeah to connect this contact group to this EOS mount ring uh, I'm gonna unscrew another one over here Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's two. Actually, Canon has. Okay, I cannot do that. 
I had to pick up the teeniest screwdriver I have to in order to unscrew this one. Obviously, the most important part not to lose these little teeny tiny screws. All right, so. Uh, this is unscrewed now, I have to unscrew these guys, they are, should be easy because they don't carry any load, it's just uh, cosmetic stuff. So, so it's one very important note, if you get very very close to the lenses, it is very important to actually do this. Please use your gloves. You don't want to destroy. Um, you don't want to leave fingerprints on your lenses, or and you don't want to destroy your electronics in case in case of static. So here we are. We got in a little bit further. So here is the protective uh, back cap. So now the the contact group can be removed and the EOS mount ring can be actually removed as well. So, oh, not very nicely made. There's a brass ring over here. That's, oh, oh yeah, those are shims, nice. Just to make sure there is a correct um, uh, length to the, to the sensor from the, from the, uh, from the lens. Okay, what else is here? As I go, as I figure out because I never opened this lens before, so I have to actually do a little bit of figuring out here. So one, two, there are one, two, three more screws have to open. This time I'll be using this kind of screwdriver because it's obviously much nicer. This is probably going to open this uh, plastic top. To it uh, will let me to remove this plastic top. Over here. Okay. Okay. So, sometimes we need to detach, or not sometimes, pretty often have to detach these uh, contacts over here. So, in order to detach the contact, you have to just slide it like that. Okay, I'm going to show you. Just, I'll see if I focus a little bit closer. And make it a little bit brighter. Okay. Okay, you have to like pop this one and that one. This one and that one, this one and that one, chick. Now we can slide this ribbon off. Okay, detached. Make sure not not lose any screws. Put it together because this is the important. All right. So as you see, there is a, there are many connectors over here. So this essentially, in order to free this board, have to detach all of them. Um, Sometimes it's not necessary to free all of them, but you don't know what's inside, so it's just better to... Not gonna touch this one. Some of them even numbered here, it says 21 or something on this one. There's number 20, I see only 21, but that's mean. It can be anything. Okay, gently use a screwdriver to pop them out, like this. It's not gonna come out easily. Okay, let's do a little more. Like this and like this. Okay. So main circuit board is free of wires. Now I have to unscrew. Sometimes it's easy to use tweezers. Uh, 
else? There's another one over here. Oh, wow, look at this one. Wait, maybe this one was rattling. Uh-oh. Oh, maybe this is... No! Look at that! I did not unscrew this. I swear. Okay. You suspicious little screw. Yeah, it doesn't rot anymore. That was that screw. I'm just curious where it came off. Hmm. This starting to become very interesting. Okay, now we can leave the PCB. Okay, PCB goes here. Alright. Um, I don't even know what to do now, actually. Should I continue? And I don't see anywhere I tag that that thing got loose. Okay, I will continue. Okay, now we have one, two, three more. So usually they go by trees. <laughs> Let's gonna open this other ring. Re release that other ring. go okay then let go unless it's just no okay I'm gonna lift I'm gonna lift those screws Oh, it's not going to be lifted that easy. Okay, this one, yes. Over here. This one, no. This one, yes. Over here. force applied, we don't need any force here, if it's not going, try it again, nicely, gently, put it back in here, well, and try to remember what was where, just in case, <laughs> because, yeah, as you see, the screws are all different sizes and things like that, so just make sure I'm gonna put it back in, the right screw, okay, that's not coming out, not coming out okay what else we need to unscrew I was expecting this thing will okay um, I want to continue before I understand where it goes and how it detaches. <laughs> Have to pause the video here and continue. Okay, it turned out to be there is a mat, uh, the rubber uh, ribbon like that, so I just lifted it with my screwdriver just like this. I don't want to put it back in at the moment, just to, to, not to repeat the same time. Very interesting, this metal, the, the copper plate over here, I don't know what is this for. And here is the, uh, I guess this is the little rod which actually connects out of, to the focusing, focus, uh, sorry, this to the zoom mechanism.
Yeah, okay, so here's the zoom mechanism. Okay, I'll try to... Okay, that does nothing really, so... Uh-huh, I see. Okay, now, better not to play with the... What was that? I'm curious now. Where did this go? Okay. Okay, now we are to the point. Okay, so here we are. So this is the autofocus uh, uh, motor. Okay, and and the clutch. It it actually pretty smooth and nice. So I don't know what could be a problem here no binding no yeah works very well the question is do I want to dig further or not like oh, oh wow there's a little gear over here uh -huh. rotates when I rotate the focusing ring oh actually several gears that's why it's so nice and smooth. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Okay, I see the aperture mechanism over here. Still want to figure out... Oh, I think I see, I see where the screw came off. Actually, this whole assembly is loose. Okay, well, I think I give it a shot to put this... You see that? That if there is not enough tension, that that autofocus uh, clutch may not work properly. Okay, I probably gonna stop here. I'm not gonna dig any further because this is not tear down of this particular lens. My f one of the favorite lens actually. This is an attempt to repair it. So I'm gonna put this little teeny tiny fender back in place. Yes, looks like he is from right over there. Screw it in. Tighten it. Tighten all of them. Oh yeah, they're pretty loose. Oh my gosh. I never actually touched this lens, never opened it before. And this one is loose. What the hell is going on here? And oh my god, all of them are unless they have to be tightened to the to the certain uh, torque, but I don't believe that. Otherwise, they would be like thread locked and things like that. Blah blah blah. But they just screws. Actually, that's a good idea to thread lock them. Okay. For now, I'm gonna just tighten them. Okay. No, it's nothing loose, nothing loose here, nothing lo well, this is loose, but that's okay. Whoa, that was interesting. Okay, let's put it all back in. Where is our little hole over here? Okay, now it will be funny to actually pass. So we have to match this hole over here. We is this hole over here and then put this rod through okay that goes nicely now I had to pull this ribbon nicely it's not gonna be that easy I don't even know how I'm gonna do this nicely through this hole so there is a hole over here and I need to pull this ribbon through it It's 
not gonna just give up. Need like third arm or something or third hand over here. Okay. It looks like just like that. You come back here, you come back here. And you too. Okay, nice, nice, nice. I don't know, maybe this guy has to be there. Okay, just like that. And you too. Eh, come back, come back. Okay, nice. Now I have to align. aligned properly otherwise I would have a little bit of trouble here is my zoom control I have to put this screw back in yes it it worked it worked okay it's in So zoom works, zoom works, as you see, focus works. Very nice, very nice. Okay, uh, next part was put this back. Sometimes it's tricky to put these rubbery things back because they look af bad after that. So we have to like do a really good job of putting this rubber um, grip back on. And I have to be really careful not to damage anything. Nicely back on back on back on have to like push on it fit it in nicely nicely back on Okay, and limbs seems like it's on like it was always there Okay. Now have to Okay, make sure the holes are aligned, it's very very important. And in this case they are not aligned. If they are not aligned, there's a sign of something went wrong. But mm -hmm, this thing rotates. Okay, so okay, let's make sure we aligned our also nicely, no sharp moves, or like that. Okay, now these holes, one, two, three, are aligned. I have to make a pause here, I need to get better tweezers. These kind of tweezers are so much helpful in this case, so you can just um, grab a screw like this and position it properly without bending your arms or something take a screw make sure all holes aligned make sure you're not gonna make any more new threads or something like that and if you tighten like three screws like that, just to make sure tighten them a little bit over here, then a little bit over here, just just and a little bit over here. Never tighten it all the way to the end on one side, like this, just like this, just to make sure there is no, it's not gonna get crooked or anything like that, you know, it's. Make to make sure on all three sides it's gonna be properly uh, secured. Pretty much the same what you do when you put your tires. Essentially a star pattern, star pattern, pattern. But here only three screws. Okay, let me check these screws. Yeah, these are pretty tight, pretty nice. Okay, okay. Now it's the turn to put our PCB back. Now it's very important to remember how did you disassemble it. 
So there could be some clues. Sometimes it's easy to forget how did you put it in. So you see, it's not really obvious right now how it's supposed to go in. So also mention, also make sure the ribbons are nicely tucked in, like that. You know, this one is fine. This one is fine, fine, it's fine, fine. Too. Otherwise, it's gonna rub and gonna get destroyed. So how did it go? How does it supposed to be? Not like that. Probably like that, right? You just, you just, kind of. See, try to align it in a few different directions and see which one the fits the connectors fits there. Just like that, just like that. Yes. Just like that, and like this. Never force anything, nice and slow nice and slow okay just like this okay so all aligned so now just screw in the pcb little with those really stubby little screws okay one, one screw over here yeah it's going to be a pretty long video, but hey, can you imagine if I would go all the way inside to kind of open the assembly the lens complete? It'll be like probably an hour video or something. So maybe if you do want to watch it, I'll try to kind of fast forward it a little bit or just try to fast forward it yourself. But that's what we have right now. Okay, now this is very handy to actually put those ribbons back. Just like that. Click. Next one, click. Next one, click. Make sure you push them all the way through. Some of them are seems to be getting better than others, but this one doesn't really go. Again, don't force anything. Doesn't want to go. Don't push on it. This click. Like this one, click to nice. Now lock. This one seems to be lock, lock, and lock. And this one is the last one. Lock. Okay, this one was part of the AFMF mechanism so I'm gonna go last now I'm gonna put this top part back in don't remember the, the orientation but let's figure out sometimes it's very important to oh yeah this is gonna help us a lot so this little ribbon cable gonna help us to put it in the right orientation. So probably it was somewhere like here. And lock. Now put it all back, just like that, carefully. Okay, screws. I'm gonna guide the whole thing in the right way. Okay, these are self toppers in the plastic, so do not over tighten them. In metal, you can tighten them very well, but in the plastic, do not, because you're gonna ruin the the thread and you have lots of problems with that. Never over tighten these. Plus, it doesn't have to be like super crazy tight, anyways. It's kind of weird that it actually goes in the plastic. This is, uh, hmm. You see, this is actually K 
carry some carrying some Lancelot. It's kind of interesting why it goes. So yeah, this is attached to the camera, so it's like imagine it's like this. I would make it metal, but and it's not a cheap lens. They, at the time, I paid like six hundred dollars for it or something used. So it was like twelve years ago. Okay, now it's pretty secure. Very very nice. Now let's put the ring back in the right order. So that was in the bottom. It goes in the bottom. Oops, ring. There's also very important line line up of the holes because they are apparently not symmetrical. Bizarre. Did they put it the wrong way? Okay, that's the right way, and I guess this is gonna be, oops, huh, it's very important this side, so it has to be like that. Okay, then This is a little bit easier because there is a ring here and dot over here. So those dots usually have to match over dot here and dot here. And there is also the contact group have to match with this um, screws over here. So that's easy to put back on. Press on it just to make sure it's all nice and tight. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna put the bayonet screws on or Canon EOS mount screws on. Why I'm doing that first because they are okay, it's not gonna cooperate. Again, lightly, lightly. Come back. Okay, here. This one goes lightly. It's not easy to do. That's why we have tweezers. Tighten them one by one, but not strong. And one more circle. Do star pattern like that, just to make sure it's evenly tightened on all sides. No, nope, not crooked, not anything like that. Now take those little teeny tiny screws, if they are not gonna run away from me, and put them in here. This is the. This is very important to have gloves on because it's easy to touch this back lens and like make it dirty. It's already a bit dirty. I'm gonna clean it up, but even with the tweezers, it's not easy to put this little thing on. Tiny, tiny. Yeah, not lo don't lose any kind of s screw like that on the floor. It's gonna be pain in the ass to find it in the carpet. Okay. Let's tie a teeny tiny screwdriver. Oh wow, this magnetic screwdriver does not cooperate. Okay, stay. Uh, 
tighten it lightly again, similar to other places we did. Take another one. In Canon uh, bayonet or in Canon mount, it just happened, right? It flew off. Ah, it's my luck. Okay, I'll be back. Well, I was uh, I was saying that you have to be careful, and actually, I made mistake myself, and this little screw flew off, and I cannot obviously find it again. Uh, so yeah, just make sure your screw is not gonna fly off anywhere else, any especially when you have a carpet. But it's so tiny, even without carpet, it's almost impossible to find. This will work with one; it's not a big deal. Also, I have a whole bunch of other screws from different lenses. I can try to put it. Uh, the only thing that may happen is that the bio, the, 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 this uh, contact group can just move in, inside. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. But anyways, I'll try to find another little screw to replace that one. But for now, it's going to just work. I think it's going to just work fine with one. That's the biggest issue with, uh, with this kind of jobs that you can lose teeny tiny screws super easily. Plus, this is probably not the best tweezers for this. It would be nice to have some kind of plasticky tweezers, um, which not gonna launch your little teeny tiny screws in the air in like in unknown direction. Or something super magnetic, which actually will prevent them from flying away, off. Okay, again, this one. A little bit of on this one. Again, this one. Now I'm gonna just tighten them lightly. Tighten them. Then. Okay. So I have to test it now. Let me bring my uh, trusty 7D, Canon 7D, and see if. Uh, I fixed the problem. Okay, here we are. Okay, let's remove all this jazz. Bring the lens and the camera, I mean. Let's... Okay, let's line up. Okay, it focuses close by. Seems to be fine. Let's see if it focuses into infinity properly because that was the biggest issue. Okay, I'll remove this mode. Somewhere there. No, doesn't do it. Okay, let me try off the camera. Seems to be working. Um, well, I have to do field test for sure, uh, but it seems to be working. So that's, I think, it was the fix. Uh, for some reason, the little screw came off from the clutch mechanism on this lens, and it was so essentially. Uh, uh, Here's the infinity sign, so it was always stopping somewhere here and never going past that on autofocus. So it was just like stopping somewhere here, and that's it. There is still like way to go to, for example, focus on the dark skies. Sorry, in the skies or in a distant landscape or something like that. So it was not focusing properly on infinity. So obviously, I'll do a field test, but um, this is. Uh, as far as I can go uh, at the moment, and, uh, and I hope this lens is fixed. So, sorry for uh, this little bit long video, but um, I went a little bit into details to explaining what I'm doing, and um, actually repairing lenses is a bit of a lengthy process. Thank you for watching, see you next time.